Previously on Historical Geocaching, I'm visiting the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Most recently, I've toured the Civil War portion of the With Liberty and Justice for All exhibit, an exhibit on America's enduring struggle for freedom. The highlight was seeing the very chair that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. So here we are in the Votes for Women. Uh, Alice Paul said, We women of America tell you that America is not a democracy. 20 million women are denied the right to vote. So in the 1800s, women had very few rights in America. Two different main leaders, I guess, in this um, voting for women battle. Um, Alice Paul, as I mentioned, and then um, Carrie Chat, Cat, I believe her first name. Carrie was her first name, I believe. Um, said two different kinds of leaders emerged during the early 1900s. Cat was a lobbyist called the agitator. Though their, through their efforts, women everywhere and men too joined the fight to gain women's suffrage, meaning the right to vote. Cat and Paul strongly disagreed with each other's approaches, but one couldn't have succeeded without the other. Here's a flag. New York State Women, Women's Suffrage Party. This what, uh, yeah, Carrie Chapman Cat, I learned about her in American History class. Um, when a just cause reaches its flood tide, as ours has done, whatever stands in the way must fall before its overwhelming power. Here's a picture of her. She lived from 1859 to 1947. She said, this marker says that she was um, organized, that she was a strategist and a convincing speaker. Carrie grew up in a family where women were expected to devote themselves to family and home, but she tried some unusual jobs, including law clerk and reporter. Susan B. Anthony passed the mantle on to Cat when she needed a dynamic new president to head up, to head up the National Suffrage Organization. And um, Alice Paul here, 1885 through 1977. She was determined, impatient, and direct. Intelligent and well-educated, Alice got caught up in the women's suffrage movement while studying in England. More extreme tactics fascinated her, like public protests and hunger strikes in jail. These were straightforward and immediate, and they made headlines. She used them later as an American suffrage leader. She said here, quote from her, it is better as far as getting the vote is concerned, I believe, to have a small united group than an immense debating society. Uh, and they would form protests and parades, and here is a car Model T, of course, dressed up as if it were in a parade for women's suffrage and voting. Here's a pretend jail cell because some people would go to jail for supporting this sort of stuff. And um, the 19th Amendment, as you can see here, the different, um, when each state ratified it according to color. Um, 1919 is the yellow, 1920 is the orange, the kind of Light purple is 1921 through 1953, and the dark purple is 1969 through 1984. This um, amendment allowed the women to vote. And so, women vote at last. In 1920, almost 75 years after the Seneca Falls Convention, 26 million women proudly voted in the presidential election. And that finishes off that portion of this with Lydia and Justice Carlson.